What's going on, Clarity Coders? In today's video, we're gonna do something a little different. I read an article that came out in Python Weekly talking about how Python passes arguments into functions. Now, I think this is extremely important for every level of Python programmer because people get it messed up so often. They tend to think it's passed by value or passed by reference, and it's neither. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. All right, so this article is really interesting because it uses examples to prove first why Python is not passed by value and then why it's not passed by reference. So let's go over these examples real quick. So I'm gonna create a new replit instance. You can do this locally if you want, but code along. It's a fun little exercise along the way. If you're advanced, stick with us, comment below what I messed up or anything like that. All right, so my example is gonna be pretty easy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna set my age. I'm gonna say my age equals 32. Then I'm going to try and change that value in a function. So I'm going to create a function called make me young, and I'm gonna pass in my age. Then finally, I'm gonna print out my age. So of course we have to define that function above. Let's define that saying we're passing in age and then inside this function we can do something to age itself. So inside this function, let's say age equals 26. I think that's the prime, right? I'm going to, I'm currently 32. I'm gonna run this function, pass in age. It's gonna change my age to 26, and then we're gonna print out age and see what happens. So if we run this, you'll see we get back 32. So our change inside the function did not affect our age below here. So what this is saying to me, or what this is an example of, is that Python might be passed by value. This age variable that we've assigned to 32, when we pass that into the function, it's not passing in that reference, it's just saying, hey, here's 32. And all that happens without changing the actual value stored inside of our age variable. So this makes it seem to a lot of people like Python is a pass by value. I'm gonna comment this out, so I'm gonna shift, press, control, and then the forward slash. So I commented all those out. So now we can see that we think Python is a pass by value. It can't be passed by reference because 32 didn't change. If it was passed by reference, that should have changed. So let's do another example here. So I'm gonna say my friends equals, and I'm gonna create a list of all my friends. Let's say Orion, oh, who's a coworker, not really a friend. Zane, who's my brother, and my wife. So out of my three friends, they're all relatives or coworkers. Fantastic. So now I have three friends here. I'm going to create a function again, and I'm gonna call it change friends. And I'm gonna pass in all my friends to that function, and then we're gonna print out all my friends. Awesome. So we've decided that based on above, Python is not passed by reference and it's probably passed by value. So let's define this function. Let's call it def change friends. Let's pass in friends. And inside this function, let's manipulate my friends. That doesn't sound great. So friends, let's change the first friend, Orion, who's a great dude, but we're gonna eliminate him from my friends list. So I'm changing out Orion. So I'm changing out the position zero friend, which is that first in the list. I'm changing it to Bob instead of Orion. Now what we learned above is that we think Python is passed by value. So we're assuming here when we print this out, our friends list is gonna say Orion, Zane, and Cat still because anything happened in here is just, we're just passing in the value, so it shouldn't change, right? And if we run this, you'll notice that it does change. So what the heck is going on here? Well, that's because Python is neither passed by value or passed by reference. It's actually passed by assignment. Now to understand that, we have to take a quick look at the difference between immutable and mutable objects in Python. So I'm gonna create a new replet here, Python again. 
So in Python, everything is an object, and these objects have three attributes that we can track. The ID of the object, that's where the actual object is, so it's a unique identifier for the object itself. The type of the object, and then the value of the object. Now what we're interested in here is the type of the object. That determines whether it's immutable or a mutable object. So let's look at an example here. Let's stick with a mutable object. So a mutable object is something like a list, which makes sense. Mutable means we can change what's inside this object. So if we go with the exact same example, I think, I might, the order of friends might be different here. We can now print out the ID value of our friends list. And we can print out the type if we wanted or anything else. So let's go ahead and run this. And if we run this, you'll see that we get an ID value and the class. Perfect. So now let's also make a change to this list. Now remember, it's mutable. So we're going to change, just like we did in the example, the zero index. We're going to set that equal to Bob. And then I'm going to copy these exact lines down below and print them and run it again. And you'll notice something interesting here, that even though we change this object and it now contains different values, because now it has Bob, Zane, and Cat, it still has the exact same ID. And if we wanted to show that it did change, we could actually print out our friends list as well. Cool. Run this one more time. And you'll see that we did in fact change the list, but the ID value stays exactly the same. Now, how is this different from our other example? So if we do print here, do slash n, Now let's do our other example. So in my other example, we had age equals 32, and we can do something similar. We can print out the ID of age. We can print out the type of age, and let's actually print out age itself. Then let's make a change to age. So in this case, let's say plus or equals one. So maybe in the program or something you're incrementing the age by one. So let's run this, and we'll ignore the top part, it should stay the same, and the bottom part here is our immutable objects. So if you look at this, we have an ID, a type which is int, and then the original value of our age, which is 32. Integers are immutable objects, meaning we can't change them, we can only create new objects. So you'll see below here, in order to increment age to 33, it gave us a whole new object ID. So it's creating a brand new object. It is not changing 32 to 33. It's just pointing at a whole new value here. Okay, so that probably makes sense to you. So now back to our original examples, how is Python passing in these arguments and why does it work the way it does? So I'm gonna hop back to my other arguments Replit that I created here. So why does this work the way it does? Let's first look at our pass, our immutable object here, example. So the immutable object example, I'm passing in age of 32. It is passing in the actual assignment of age, so that ID value. So if that ID value you know it's a long number, but say it was one, two, three. Right now it's still one, two, three, but as soon as I try to change that, it's immutable. So it has to change that object reference. So it creates a new object reference, say three, four, five, and points that at 26. So when we print out age down here, it's still referencing the original ID on the object of one, two, three in my made up example. So it still prints out 32. Now in the below example, it again passes in the original reference to the object. So say our friend's object's original ID was 123, it passes that in to the change friends function. 
Now, it's a mutable object, so it doesn't have to create a new object. So it changes the zero index to Bob on the original object of one, two, three. When we go down to print it, this friends is still pointing at that ID of one, two, three. So we actually see the change to our screen. So that's the difference. It's not passing by value. It's not passing by reference. It's passing by assignment. And you get different looking results when you pass things into a function based on whether it's an immutable or a mutable object. I hope you guys like this video. I know it's a little different format. So I'm gonna throw the link to the actual article below. Check that out as well. Let me know what you think in the comments and any concerns you have with the presentation. And until next time, keep coding.